I know I've done demos in the past. Probably you've seen it where I've gone in and I've gone to our single configurator in the development hub and I take an iframe for an object and I stick it in an HTML page and I show you, wow, look at that. All I have to do is take this iframe object and I could build a mashup and, I sh and we talk about how we could build a really nice looking application um, like that using HTML. And when you talk to your HTML folks or your Java people, they're like, oh, that's great. Um, I just got to get all these iframes. What about my style sheets and all that stuff? So what I wanted to do today is spend a couple minutes talking to you about what this could really look like by showing you a really good, sexy example of it. And so I'm going to show you a demonstration that our friends at Anne Arundel Medical Center have put together. Um, it's a population health demo app. Um, the data here, just so you know, this is fake data. This isn't really um, representative of their location. But the concept is. And so this is a mashup that looks like a good-looking application. Um, this style sheet could be used for multiple applications. Maybe I use it for looking at ACO patients, or maybe I look at it to drill down into specialists. I could do anything with this um, applicant with with this mashup. It could put all kinds of different things together. Maybe I put a sheet of KPIs together. I put a sheet of analytics together. Um, the nice thing is with the style sheets now. I'm taking these objects. I'm kind of color coding. Um, to a style as well. Um, the beautiful thing about this mashup is if I've got 150 objects I need to show, the HTML page could scroll. So where ClickSense locks you into a screen or a tab, there's no reason that you can't provide your end user as many objects as you want should they be willing to scroll through those things. Um, so you can extend your real estate beyond what just ClickSense provides. You can also do things that would be common across all your applications, like provide a filter box um, so that you can allow users to make choices. I can choose these things. I could also say, hey, I want to clear stuff. Um, if I make a selection within an object, maybe I want to provide the end user a way to clear where they made that selection. I don't want them to have to think through clearing all selections, just the selection they made. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to select a few more things from here um, so that you can see, hey, I can deselect that um, object, but I still have my filter here, but I could also filter there. I could also go back as I'm going through these, I could go forward and I could clear them all. So whatever you'd like to provide in terms of an interface, you can do. Now the interesting thing about this, this very well could potentially have been done using iframes, um, but this is really more to show you our API engine and how this was actually built. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the actual example. I'm gonna go to our development hub and you'll see that I've got an ACO patients mashup here. I'm going to open this mashup so I can show you how this is kind of done behind the scenes. There's a number of files here. If you're not a, a coder for HTML, don't get overwhelmed with this. Just understand the concepts. That's all this is really about. Um, there's a basic starting file that just says, hey, this is an extension um, for ClickSense. I've got an HTML page that we'll come back to. This has got all of my HTML code. What I really want to show you is the JavaScript page. So there's a ACO patient's JavaScript page. It's got a number of things in here that would be pretty common. I'll show you how we can actually kind of get started with this stuff. We can define variables, do all the JavaScripty things that a JavaScript programmer would do. What I want to show you um, is basically the bottom of this, how I got my data. Um, so it's opening this application. Don't worry about the fact this isn't a human readable name. Um, that's just the application name um, so that we can kind of port this around to different things. Um, it's just a name. And then it says, hey, once I've got this object opened, I want you to go get this object and 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 this object. And this object and as many objects as you want. 
if we need to get the data for multiple uh, apps, we would have different apps that get opened um, in this code. And all it's going to do is get this object and bring it back with this name. And now this is the name that we could use anywhere. Um, so no iframes here defining sizes or shapes. I've just got an object. I've got to click object um, to handle the analytics. These objects I can use anywhere, including my HTML page. Um, so don't worry about all this styling and everything. Here's the key thing. This is saying use this um, class of popout. And this is a filter panel, basically. This was the object. So this object over here that we pulled back is QV10 was in one of the objects. And it's basically the filter panel within that application. Um, and so each of these, as we scroll through, there's a whole bunch of just standard HTML stuff here. Again, don't get overwhelmed with the coding itself. The important thing is I'm pulling an object back from click. And I'm just using that object. I, I can then choose what style that object gets displayed in. It may be this column XS12. It could be a full height, a tall height, a partial height, whatever my style sheets are have been defined to be. It will use those things. So how did it know what these IDs were? Because this isn't how we build the app. We don't build the app with this HRDDZ thing. Um, so let me walk through and show you that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, my mashup editor or I'm going to say, hey, I want to create a new one. I'm going to say I want to create a new project and I'm going to call this my demo mashup API and I'm going to select a template. For now, we're just going to use a simple grid template just to, to help you understand this. We've walked through this before going through the single configurator. This mashup is going to be a little bit different way. Um, so when I do this, it's going to define if I want to do back, forward, bookmarks, more, and have that. That's what this standard is going to build for me. Now it's a matter of what objects am I going to use. You'll see here if I look at this JavaScript, hey, ooh, wow, it looks like it already builds a whole bunch of stuff um, for me. Right? There's already a base style sheet. There's nothing down here regarding the apps or the objects, though. So if I come back here, I can select an application that I want to deal with. And I can pull from any of the objects, I, from any of the applications. I want to pull from that same application so that we can see some of the same data. I might be looking at cost of stay. I might want to look at cost of stay that way. And all I do is drag that object there. Just the same as if I click an object and I did single configurator. I click the object. I could mix pages if I want. I could say, hey, I want that object from that page, but I want this object from this page. And I can build this app, this, this mashup, any way I want. This is not the style sheets I want. My only purpose in showing you this is that behind the scenes, it now shows you, hey, Here's the API code that you would use to go grab those objects. You're going to open this application, and then you're going to go get this object and this object. And in this way, you could then find what those IDs are. And so it's giving you the ID behind the scenes for those objects via the API. The more you start understanding about our API, you could say, hey, go do an open app and give me a list of the objects and maybe what the titles would be. I like using this because as I click on any of these, I get to see what I'm visualizing rather than the fact this is just a KPI where there may be no title defined. Um, so by using the mashup editor, even though it's just such a simple little thing like this, I could find these codes. I can pull that back and now I could take that and put that somewhere. So if you have somebody to build a pretty style sheet that would be common across perhaps all of your mashups, you can do a lot more serious, sexy stuff um, doing that than what you would do by just pulling back maybe the iframe and sticking it out in a dummy HTML page um, like I typically do. So you've got an awful lot of options to do some really neat stuff rather than just doing this. 
Hope you enjoy the APIs and hope you build lots and lots of mashups that you can hand to your customers.